Hi, it's Rob Shapiro from Technique Peak. Now we're going to look at the cuboid, cochineal cuboid joint, and see how its the motion is. So what we're going to do is we're going to be able to palpate it. So we find the fifth met and we drop off. We know that's our going to be our cuboid. We can palpate it from the bottom. The bottom takes up about two thirds of the bottom of the foot, and from the top we'll grab it through here, below, next to the calcaneus, but onto the cuboid. Now if I want to mobilize it or test the range of motion. What I want to do is I could do a, a, a dorsal glide in that direction and a plantar glide. So we can do with, with pronation goes more of that dorsal glide and more of a plantar glide with supination. And we want to see as we go through it, the key is to find the angle. So if I go, if I don't go correctly, it, oh, it's jammed up. No, it's not. If I change my angle the way it needs to be, then you could feel that motion. So we go to its end range. We could add some some passive range to it and take up the slack. Same thing, we can go into a little plantar flexion inversion, take up the slack for our plantar glide. Okay. And a lot of people you see with ankle sprains, we, we miss the cuboid or cuboid subluxation, whatever word you want to use for it, but a cuboid that's not moving correctly and you'll feel it. You'll feel the inability of that joint to move. Okay, and that's key and we're going to show it in a free future a couple of ways to manipulate that joint, but for now, Let's just find that joint and we can work our way up dorsal glide and a plantar glide. Take up the slack. It's Rob Shapiro from Technique Peak.